Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to part two of my most anticipated book releases of 2016. I did a part one which I will link somewhere up here and also down in the description box so if you missed it go watch that. Those are all the books from January to May 2016 that I'm looking forward to and this part two will be everything from June to December 2016 and at least one thing that doesn't have a definite publication date yet. I'm gonna jump straight into this without any other preamble. First is Vigil by Angela Slatter coming out from Joe Fletcher Books in June 2016. This is described as urban fantasy. Urban fantasy usually isn't my kind of thing. I don't read a lot of it. I'm not really attracted to it. Depends on what kind of urban fantasy it is, I guess. But I really want to give this a shot and read a novel by Slatter because I have really enjoyed her short fiction this past year. I've read a novella and a couple of stories by her. And this book other than being described as urban fantasy, the only other thing I could find out about the plot is that it is based on a 2013 short story she wrote for Lightspeed called Brisneyland by Night. So I'm going to go and read that story and then hopefully I will enjoy the book as well. This book is also the first in a series that's going to be launched, and I think the second book has also been announced, but I'm not sure how long the series is supposed to be. You guys know that I love Joe Walton's Thessaly series, and the third and final book called Necessity is coming out from Tor in June 2016. No spoilers here for the previous books in the series. I'm just really looking forward to the conclusion of this crazy experiment with Plato's Republic, and it seems like this final book will might take a more overt science fictional tone, which combined with time-traveling gods and ancient classics has me positively tingling with anticipation. In July 2016, coming out from Golance, we have a book which is not a new book. It is a reprint, and that is the SF Masterworks edition of Always Coming Home by Ursula K. Le Guin, which was originally published in 1985. And I'm mentioning this because I did not know that this book even existed until some months ago. And it's suddenly being put into the SF Masterworks lineup, which is exciting. That means it's kind of like, it's part of the SF canon, but I've never heard of it, which really intrigues me. From what I understand, this has been described as an archaeology of the future, and it is about a culture of Kesh in the far future on the northern Pacific coast, and it is archaeological, anthropological, ethnographic, and it includes artwork, poetry, music, just a lot of stuff. I still can't believe I've never heard of this book until recently. <laughs> Next, Imprudence by Gail Carriger, which is the second book in the Custard Protocol duology, is coming out from Orbit in July 2016. This follows the daughter, Prudence, of Alexia Terabody, who is the preternatural main character of the Parasol Protectorate. Now, the first book in the series, called Prudence, I thought had some pretty serious weaknesses where like the strength of the writing and especially character development and characterization were concerned. And I've heard that Gail Carriger had more time to devote to writing and rewriting and revising in Prudence. So I have much higher hopes for Prudence's storyline and her adventures with her friends and vampires and werewolves and other supernatural characters as they go off to Egypt. Next is Four Roads Crossed by Max Gladstone, which is the fifth book in his craft sequence coming out from Tor, also in July 2016. Now this is the fifth book. I've only read the first and second books. I have the third book on my immediate TBR. I need to read that before the end of the year. Um, I really enjoyed the first two books. I really enjoyed how diverse Max Gladstone's world building seems to be. If you just look at the covers of these books, they have people of color and women on the covers, and you actually read the books. It's just fantastic. The series is set like in an alternate history version of our world. Uh, all the cities have different names. Everything and history is based on magic, and a lot of magic comes from gods. A lot of magic seems to run like on contract law rules, which is really interesting. And every book basically takes place in a different city with different characters. But this book, this fifth book, from the synopsis, sounds like 
Once again, crisis is coming to the big city of Alt Kulumb, but a lot of characters might be returning from previous books, including the character of Tara from the first book, who I really liked. She was really badass. Um, so I'm just looking forward to finally seeing characters coming back. I didn't think that Gladstone was ever going to do that, so I need to catch up on the series and get this book eventually. Next is Ghost Talkers by Mary Robinette Kowal, coming out from Tor in July 2016. This is about a woman who is a medium in the Spirit Corps during World War I. The Spirit Corps speaks to the dead and immediately passes on information for the war effort. Um, I'm not a big fan of reading World War I or World War II era fiction. It tends to make me unhappy. I'm just not interested in reading fiction based on real world wars, but I'm really looking forward to what Kowal will write now that she has finished her Regency era fantasy series, The Glamorous Histories. And if there's one thing I can say highly about Kowal is that she seems to really do her research. She seems to really aim for historical accuracy for her fantasy works. It just gives this veracity or verisimilitude to her work, which I really enjoy. You know this book was coming too! The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, the second book in her Broken Earth series, is coming out from Orbit in August 2016. This will almost certainly be the continuing story of Esun and the impending fifth season, which threatens to kill everyone. Maybe the rise to power of the Origines? I'm just guessing there, that's what I want to see, but I loved the first book in the series called The Fifth Season, so it's probably one of my favorite books of 2015, and I'm just so looking forward to the continuation of this series. Next is a book that is kind of a wild card. I stumbled across this, I read the synopsis, and said, that just sounds really different, and it is Everfair by Nisi Shaw coming out from Tor in September, and I'm gonna read you a snippet of the synopsis because this is what made me go, that is a really unusual genre mashup. Everfair is a wonderful neo-Victorian alternate history novel that explores the question of what might have come of Belgium's disastrous colonization of the Congo if the native populations had learned about steam technology a bit earlier. So it's alternate historical fantasy steampunk. I have never heard of, of a book, a fantasy book set in the Congo, so I'm sold. I gotta read that. <laughs> I really need to try that. I was so happy when I found this next book was coming out because guess what? Connie Willis hasn't had a book come out in six years. Yes, six years. By the time that this next book will be published, it'll have been six years since she published Blackout All Clear. I love her sense of humor, I love her madcap science fictional adventures, and I want something more by her. And Crosstalk is coming out from Del Rey in September 2016, and I finally found some information about what the book is about. And I believe this is a standalone. It doesn't seem to be related to any of her other books. It is about telepathy and uh, a world in which we are overly communicating, and the main character, a woman, gets a device implanted along with her boyfriend so that they can sense each other's feelings. And I, I can just see Willis doing something hilarious but totally on point about being able to sense what other people are feeling, like, oh, that sounds like a disaster for a relationship, so... Oh, this is very anticipated. The penultimate book I have to talk to you guys about is Ancestral Night by Elizabeth Baer, coming out, I think, from Golantz in November 2016. And this is the first book in a space opera duology called The White Space. So it says, this novel imagines the invention of the white drive, an easy, non-relativistic means of travel across unimaginable distances. The gripping story follows salvage operators as they pilot their tiny ship into the scars left by unsuccessful white transitions, searching for the relics of lost human and alien vessels. I haven't read any of Bear's science fictional works. I've mainly read her fantasy, like the Eternal Sky trilogy and some of her short fiction, which is kind of weird because I think that the first books she ever published were science fictional and sort of like military space opera type of stuff. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that one. And the final book for now that I am really anticipating in 2016 is The Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley, but I don't know anything about this book except that it's slated for release in 2016. It doesn't seem to have a publication date or a publisher yet. For all I know, it hasn't been written yet. Uh, but this is going to be a standalone space opera about 
feuding families fighting over a legion of warships in distant space. I've really enjoyed a lot of Hurley's work in the past. I have some issues with her fiction. I think she has really great subversive ideas in genre fiction, especially with like Mirror Empire. Um, but I'm not always super keen on her execution of those details. I think she's becoming a much better writer with every book that she publishes, which it's really great to be able to see an author progress that way. You know me, say science and I'm there. I really want to know uh, if Hurley could write hard science fiction and how much I'd enjoy it. So yeah, I don't know if this book will actually be published in 2016, but I'm going to mention it because I read about it and thought, I want that. And that's it. Those are my most anticipated books of 2016. I did leave a lot of things off of this list because there's just so much. There's just so much and I have to kind of narrow it down. But if there's anything major that you think I missed, an author that I love coming out with a new book or something I've never heard of, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to read any of these books, also let me know. And thank you for watching. I will talk to you again later. Bye.